Hi, uh, welcome back to my channel, if you've been here before. If you haven't, I'm Gemma and I talk about books. So this video is actually going up a couple of days later than planned. I had a couple of days off sick, I wasn't able to film or edit anything. Um, which is why this is another video being filmed on my lunch break while I'm at work. So today's video I realised that this is my fourth and I'm yet to show you any actual books. So I'm going to talk about Stephen King and the five books of his that I read in 2021. So as I was getting back into reading I decided to just dive straight into books that I already knew I loved and would enjoy. And one of them was Misery. I love this book. Um, if you have never read Misery I will give you a brief synopsis. We have Paul Sheldon who is a world famous writer. He's just finished his latest book. He's driving in his car in a blizzard and he skids off the road and crashes. Luckily for him Annie Wilkes is also driving along that road and she used to be a nurse so she basically takes him home and um, looks after him in a way. But I'm not giving any spoilers. Um, I think the thing that I love most about this book is that it is a horror that has absolutely no supernatural elements to it. The horror is completely 100% human, real. It is all about the dark and messed up things that one person can do to another. So the only thing that really brings this book down for me is that Stephen King has Paul Sheldon writing a book within this book. Um, so you would expect little extracts in, you know, excerpts, chapters, paragraphs, things like that. But in typical Stephen King fashion, he, he doesn't know when to stop. So instead of having little excerpts, we have entire chapters of the second book which are completely irrelevant <laughs> to the plot of misery apart from the fact that their their main goal is to um it's all for annie wilkes and her enjoyment and then her annoyance and Really, it kind of ended up just annoying me a little bit. They just went on for too long. Um, but otherwise, I love this book. I will always love this book. Um, Annie Wilkes, for me, is... I think she is one of the best written human characters ever written ever written. We live in a time of celebrity, of people being obsessed with celebrities. And I, so I think there's a really fine line between just scrolling through Instagram or on Twitter and then keeping a celebrity in your house. Maybe, maybe the line isn't as wide as we'd hoped it would be. I think she has a very well sort of defined moral compass um, in that she knows right from wrong and how people should treat her. It's just her reactions back to them maybe aren't quite so well judged. I'm going to make a quick disclaimer now. As I said, I read misery first because at the time it was my favourite book. Um, 
But I then had that sort of dilemma of what do I read next and looking at my Stephen King collection and being like, oh, I don't know which one to pick. So I came up with the idea of reading them all chronologically, um, which works fine, except I have obviously started out of order. So I have failed at this before I'd even started without realising. So what I'm going to do is when I get to the point where Misery would be chronologically, um, I'm just going to pop a link in to say, come back to this video. Because um, yeah, otherwise the whole thing's out of order. So the next book that I read was obviously the first book that he published, which, if you don't know, was Carrie. Um, and, you know, if you've not read this, Carrie is a teenage girl in school um, who is horribly bullied by her classmates and um, has a very religious, God-fearing mother. Um, an event happens, no spoilers, and chaos ensues. That is all I will, that's all I'm going to give away about this because it's, it's very difficult actually to talk about this book without kind of giving away the entire plot. Um, it's a very bas basic premise, it's a very basic plot. There aren't really any huge twists and turns or anything, so yeah, I'm not going to spoil anything. But this was my second attempt at reading Carrie. Um, my first attempt kind of failed dramatically. I was about 14. Um, I was also bullied at school, so I um, really didn't want to be reading about <laughs> another girl being traumatised on a daily basis. Um, another aspect that comes up quite heavily um, in this book is puberty. and. I was, I was a late developer and I didn't really want to be reading about that sort of stuff. So I um, got within a couple of chapters of this and put it down and was like, no, this book is not for me. Um, however, 20 years later, more than 20 years later, I finally got around to reading it. <laughs> this is another book where the horror elements are actually very human focused. They're really about the people. So I don't think it's a spoiler to say that Carrie is telekinetic. It's written on the back of the book. Um, so she can do things and move things with her mind. Um, and I mean it, it causes some problems. It's, you know, it gets her into a little bit of trouble. But the horror is involving Carrie's mother. She is a terrifying character, um, absolutely brilliantly written. Um, my mum absolutely hates horror, hates Stephen King, hates everything he's ever written and any film that's based on his work, but I managed to convince her to read two books by him towards the end of last year. And this was the first. She found all of the um, plot points involving the mother so terrifying that she skipped them all. <laughs> um, which I love the idea of, you know, just skimming through the horror elements of a horror book. Um, so she missed quite a bit of the, of the storyline, um, but that's that's my mum for you. So I'm really not surprised. Um, so this is not a huge book. Um, it's this edition is around two hundred and fifty pages. Um, so I actually think this being his first book is a fantastic um, introduction to Stephen King. 
The writing is fantastic, the character's brilliant. He's actually really good at writing horrible teenagers. His teenage girls are extremely believable. Um, the one thing, the one issue I have with I'm not just going to name him, it's most male authors, at some point in their books they cannot write about a female character without describing their breasts. It's annoying, it's weird, I don't know why they feel they have to do it, but they do, and there's quite a bit mentioned here, you know. Teenage girls, at some point they're in the shower, it comes up, it's all mentioned, it's very annoying. Just try and get past it. So the next book that I read by Stephen King really... I don't know why I keep saying his name, because I think we've worked out by now that this video is about Stephen King, but it's a habit. The next book I read, this surprised me so much, because I really wasn't convinced that this was going to be my cup of tea, that I was going to love it. This ended up being my favourite book of last year. And that is Salem's Lot. If you have not read this, it's about vampires. I'm not really sure that I need to say anything else. Um, and this is where Stephen King comes into his own. This is where you realise just how incredible he is at writing small town, people creating a community, creating a huge cast of characters. He just name drops characters all over the place. Um, and then they might never appear again, but it's just this idea that they're all there. Um, surrounding the main group but it just gives a sense of scale to the town. So this is set in a small town called Jerusalem's Lot in Maine and I mean it's written in such a way that you really can imagine just walking around it and knowing where things are and where people live and where everybody is and it's kind of a masterpiece in how to actually set a book and create that place. Um, so I think this originally was a short story which was in one of his first collections um, and then he expanded it out into a novel. I think I might be wrong. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. As I said, this is about vampires. These are not twilight, you know, fantasy vampires. These are terrifying. These are invading your town, your homes, killing people, spreading it like a virus. It's so atmospheric. But as I say, he creates these characters so much, you become so invested in them, that as you're going along, you really have no idea who's going to survive, who's going to get killed off. And by the end, you just have no idea how this is going to finish. And also, my favourite character in this was Matt Burke. I thought he was absolutely brilliantly written um, and yeah I was just completely invested in him and what was going to happen and whether or not he was going to survive and who with and oh, everything. Also can we just take a second to admire that cover because I 
love it. Um, this is just a mass market paperback edition from, I think it's about 10 years. Yeah, December 2011. I love it. It looks like a proper vintage copy. Um, I got it on eBay. It's in super good condition. And I love it. Okay, so this next book um, that I read is the second book that I gave to my mum to try. Um, I am going to try really hard to talk about this book and not compare it to the film. It's very, very difficult, but I'm going to try. Um, and it's The Shining. It's probably one of his most famous books and it is absolutely brilliant. However, um, my, as I say, my mum hates horror, really didn't want to read this because she had seen the film when it first came out. The only way I could get her to read it was to tell her to completely forget about the film, to remove any kind of mental images of Jack Nicholson and Shelley Duvall and to remember that there are five main characters in this book. Jack Torrance, his wife Wendy, their son Danny, Dick Halloran and the hotel itself. That is the one thing that you have to remember when you go into this book is that the hotel is a character. It's its own entity. As much as I think the film was great and visually it is stunning. I personally don't believe that Stanley Kubrick either read the book or if he did he actually understood the plot <laughs> because as great as the film is it may have been inspired by but it is not an adaptation of The Shining. So for anybody who has not read, read this um, we have a family we have Jack and Wendy Torrance and their son. Um, Jack is an alcoholic. He is physically abusive to his son, mentally abusive to his wife. Um, and he is offered a job as the winter caretaker of a hotel, an isolated hotel. And they get there and things happen. Um, so if you don't know what The Actual Shining is, it is a power that Danny has, um, which is similar to being psychic, um, in that he, he has visions. He doesn't necessarily understand what the visions are, but he has visions. So things ha happening in the hotel while they're there. Obviously, I'm not going to give spoilers, um, but it becomes obvious that there is an evil force that wants Danny's power and the easiest way to get to it is through Jack. So this story is basically good versus evil. Will they survive the winter? Will they make it out of the hotel alive? Will Jack overcome his demons, his problems? Um, I did mention another character earlier of Dick Halloran. Um, I'm not going to tell you who he is or what he does other than to say he is the hero of this book. He is the best written character in this book. This book is all about atmosphere. I mean, it's the perfect winter read, if you like being terrified. Um, there's an audio version on Audible, which is absolutely fantastic. My one tip though, is if you are working somewhere and you need to go down to the basement, 
don't be listening to the audiobook at the same time. Because I did, and it was terrifying. And I've never got out of the basement so quickly. Um, so yeah, don't do that. And then finally, um, I tackled The Beast. The final Stephen King book that I read of 2021 it took me a month to finish. And that's this just... Oh. I mean, I don't even know where to start with this one, to be honest. So something I didn't realise at first is that there are two editions of this book. When he first wrote this in 1978, um, he wasn't the massive, great, big, sort of superstar author that he is today. And he wrote this enormous, enormous book. And his publishers basically said, no, you need to cut it. So he edited it right down, took a massive amount out, got it published. He then became the massive author he is. And his readers basically said, well, what did you take out? What, what happened? So his publishers went back to him and said, can you put all this stuff back in again? This edition that I have is from uh, 1991 and it is just over 1400 pages. I listened to this, um, I read it from the physical book but I also had the audiobook on the go because I knew otherwise I wouldn't get through it all. Um, but I had my dad's old edition. And at the start of the audiobook, there is um, a sort of an introduction where Stephen King explains having two editions and that the audiobook goes with the uncut version, which meant I had to get onto eBay quickly and get this beast sent out to me. So, what the hell is the stand about? Um, basically, there is a super flu. Um, all I can say is that I'm really, really glad that I didn't attempt to read this in 2020. Um, there is a super flu. It's killing off 99% of the population. Um, but there is also a battle between good and evil. And so the survivors of the super flu um, they're not necessarily just going to get away with stuff. You know, you have to pick a side. Are you good or are you evil? At 1400 pages, this is not an easy read. And again, he has created a huge cast of characters. He name drops people simply to just describe how they died. I mean, it's, it's that simple. There are scenes in this which are heartbreaking. Again, he gets you so emotionally invested in these characters. I will admit that because there are so many, I did occasionally find myself forgetting who certain people were, um, sort of whereabouts they were, because it's, it's also set in various cities across America. So they're not all together. They're kind of all coming to coming to a point where they're going to meet, but they don't all start off together. So I did find myself on occasion forgetting who play, who people were, where they were, where they were located, what sort of little group they were in. Um, once you get your head around that, it's it's fine. I mean, you you just get it. But because you are so emotionally um, with these characters, you have been following them. You have been watching people around them dying in horrendous ways. It's a book that by the end, you're physically exhausted. It's kind of tiring reading about 
<laughs> a super flu. Um, especially when there's, you know, a pandemonium going on around you. However, when you have gotten through his longest book to date, and I, I think it's still his longest book to date, um, you do feel like you've really achieved something. <laughs> Um, this is definitely a book, I think, if you can say you've read it, you can kind of feel proud of yourself. So they are the five books by Stephen King that I read in 2021. Um, the next one that I have on the list is Night Shift, which I believe is his first short story collection. Um, I think what I'm going to do with that is slow down a bit. Um, and actually only read one story a day, possibly. Um, so if you want to know what my immediate reactions are to those stories and to any other book that I read, check out my Instagram because I do post a quick review um, as soon as I've read it, pretty much. So let me know in the comments if you have read any of these five and which were your favourites. And also, if you've read Night Shift, which short story would you recommend the most? I'm obviously going to read them all, but yeah, I'd love to know which ones you love. Um, so I will be back with another video. Uh, bye!